Hey everybody, welcome back to the Mystics of Texas. We are once again here with Gil, who has just uh, just got finished with a great video uh, about our work and working on our soul. So if you miss that, please go back and view it. It is a quick, fascinating uh, insight into how we can better ourselves and get in tune with uh, who we really are. And right now, uh, some of uh, our comments and questions and phone calls have been related to meditation. And I had someone recently tell me that meditating was a form of copping out to not dealing with uh, reality, a form of escape. You, know, you might as well go sit in front of the TV and zone out watching some uh, uh, silly movie that means nothing. Um, just another way to escape. And I think that that is a, um, I think that is something that people, there's a misconception about that people may have. And Gil, who is a long practitioner of meditation, uh, has a lot of good insight into that. And Gil, what are your thoughts on that? Well, <coughs> it's, it's very understandable um, um, to come from that perspective uh, due to our history. and. Um, it is indeed in the old era, um, uh, many practitioners, uh, unwittingly of course, uh, took it into a form of escape. Um, but that belongs to uh, a spiritual image that we develop as we do that. And if we're not careful, and if we're not watching ourselves, um, and really learn about the program that is overshadowing our mind, the program of the ego mind system of humanity, uh, then meditation could very well be um, grabbed by that program and then actually taken into a detour uh, that will lead into escapism. And, and so I understand why some are holding to that uh, perspective because it's been demonstrated before, so we, we do have an experience uh, of so, and uh, um, uh, ultimately, um, in a way, um, going into meditation and escaping the challenges uh, of, of the human experience and, and somehow sitting on a pink cloud somewhere in the sky, uh, um, free or untouched by the suffering of humanity or the challenges. And, and there is that aspect, uh, and, and it's important to address that. So again, meditation. Meditation can come in many forms, and it can lead to many, many outcomes. It all depends in your intent and purpose and experience and wisdom and how you use meditation, and for what purpose. What is the focal point of concentration at the core of your meditation? This is extremely important to establish before you go into meditation, is to establish a focal point of focus that will determine what is the intent, goal, and purpose of that meditation. Uh, and when you do, you will start to move in that direction. You will move immediately energy into that direction. Wherever your focus is, you immediately begin to move energy in that direction. And so, how do you meditate? What do you meditate for? And how do you create your meditation as a tool? And for what purpose? What is your goal? So, that can then create, again, a spectrum. Uh, some of which can lead to escapism, indeed. Uh, uh, but, uh, if done with the appropriate intent, purpose, and goal, and not just in the mind. That's very important, because meditation is not just an inquiry of the mind. This divine work, in general, cannot occur only in one aspect of consciousness. It must come again into a central point that will begin to magnetize and gather and integrate all the components of consciousness. 
So this point must include the mind, the heart, the soul, the body, the spirit essence, the fields of energy, the spheres of consciousness that, and again, most of it is unknown to the human. So here we must then activate faculties like the imagination, the vision, breath, deep feeling and sensing, contemplation, which is not so much the calculative and analytical aspect of the mind, but m more of the pondering and contemplative aspect of the mind, which has a bigger capacity than to work in, in collaboration and wovenness with the heart, with the emotional intelligence that exists deep within our inner heart. And, and this, this meditation then becomes a tool of self-exploration, restoration, and ultimately integration and transformation from the fragmented, diminished self that we have been experiencing here as humans, a survival creature that works really hard and just to, uh, just to uh, provide for the needs of survival, into a creator, sovereign creator of our own reality uh, that is embracing all aspects of self and ultimately transcend itself and unlimiting itself uh, from all of those um, external dependencies that we're experiencing here. That was well said and you're mentioning the word intent is one thing or one aspect of quite a few religions of uh, prayer before they eat or uh, some people even give thanks before they have anything to drink uh, that is to me the power of intent i am intending to have this food nourish me i am intending for this water to nourish me, to cleanse me. Uh, I think that that applies to not only meditation, but also every single endeavor that we do. Whenever you know y'all were ab about to walk inside, and immediately before you came inside, I have just a maybe it was two seconds. You know, just this feeling. I am intending to have great conversation and learning from Gil. You know, and that and I, that was my intent. And whenever I see Jill, you know, before she you know, when she gets off work from being a nurse, it is the intent. I am intending. Uh, I am striving to show her my love and gratitude and affection. Uh, and whenever we purposefully live like that, it is, it enhances and uplifts life. And I think that is the same way with your point on meditation is when we go in with the intent, with the goal, with this is what we are striving for today in this meditation. It, it sets the, the mindset, it sets the heart, it sets the essence of who we are to begin to focus on this one goal at hand that is right before us. Yes, beautifully put, yes. Yes, well, if y'all like this sort of conversation, please continue to join us. You'll find us on Rumble, BitChute, YouTube, and of course at mysticsoftexas.com. We'll see you soon.